Don't throw away that old laptop. Turn it into a DOS powerhouse and play all the classic titles. Let me show you how to build a DOS box gaming PC from a very low spec netbook. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. In my last few videos, I've been looking at upcycling my old EPC laptop to breathe some new life into this little machine. It's a low-powered netbook from 2009 with just a single-core 900MHz Celeron processor with 2GB of RAM and a very slow 16GB SSD. Now, I'm, I'm sure if you look around, um, you'll probably have some old PC gathering dust. And it seems like such a great shame to just simply scrap these bits of hardware. So, so, so far, I've managed to turn this into a Linux-based microcontroller coding machine uh, for things like Arduinos and so on. Uh, and on my very last video, I had a look at turning it into a native DOS-based gaming computer by actually installing a version of MS-DOS onto the hardware. And, and I'll put links to both of those videos in the description down below. But the, the gaming PC was one that I had very high hopes for, and, and it all worked great, apart from one big, big issue. And that was that we, we, I couldn't get any sound, no sound at all, out of the machine. So, so installing DOS directly onto the hardware meant that it needed drivers for all of the hardware to work. And there just aren't any sound drivers for some of the more modern sound cards. Now my EPC doesn't have anywhere to install a separate Sound Blaster compatible card. So although the games ran incredibly well, um, they were totally silent. So in this video, I'm going to be trying another solution to see if we can get a fully working DOS gaming PC by using emulation. Uh, and, and to be honest, when I started this project, I wasn't very hopeful about emulating a DOS gaming PC on, on this little 900 megahertz netbook. Um, but as you'll see in a second, it worked out a lot better than I expected. So the emulator we'll be using is DOSBox. Now this is one of the standard emulators you'd use to get DOS games up and running on your main PC or Mac. And it emulates the full DOS computer, including the DOS operating system, and most importantly of all for me, um, a full Sound Blaster compatible sound system, complete with all the music hardware as well. Now this means that we'll get all the sound the games can produce, and that means both sound effects and the actual full music. So if you go to the DOSBox website, you'll see lots of information about the project, along with links to some tutorials and the DOSBox manual. So the DOSBox needs a little bit of knowledge to get it to run, but I'm going to cover most of the basics in this video. Now on the top menu, you'll see a compatibility link. And if you click on that, it takes you to a page that lists out all the games that have been tested with DOSBox. Um, so you can see if the one that you want to run will work okay. Now, now most games do work quite well. And to be honest, I find the easiest way is to just try the game out and see if it works. Now, if, if it doesn't work, then you can come back to this page and check out to see if other people have managed to get it working and then start working for, um, out how to do it from there. Uh, but to get up and running, um, we'll need to get DOSBox onto our old laptop. Now, DOSBox does need an operating system to run on top of, and this can be either Windows, Mac OS or Linux. So for old hardware such as my EPC, um, Windows is not going to install, um, so we're going to need to use Linux. Now in my first video on upcy upcycling this laptop, I installed a light version of Linux um, to build up a coding machine. And this one was Lubuntu Linux, which ran uh, very well on some very low specification hardware, including this EPC. So our first step is to get this installed onto the laptop. Now, now for a full and detailed installation video, please do check out my previous tutorial. And again, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. 
So in, in this particular video now, uh, I'll be running through the process quite quickly. Um, but to be honest, it, it is actually quite straightforward. Um, most of it is just following the on-screen prompts, um, especially once you've managed to get it to boot from the disk image. So you can download load Lubuntu from lubuntu.net. So on the download page, um, you first of all need to make sure that you know if your PC is a 64-bit or a 32-bit system. Now, my EPC runs a Celeron processor, which was 32-bit architecture. So I'm going to need this um, alternate 32-bit image. So once you've downloaded the correct image for your machine, you just simply need to burn it onto a USB drive. Plug that into your laptop and then get it to boot from this drive. And you'll find that Lubuntu will then start installing. Now, there are a few choices that you need to make along the way. Lubuntu will want to repartition your hard drive. And I always think it's the best idea to let it delete my old partitions and then just reuse the entire disk for the Lubuntu installation. But of course, um, it's up to you how you want to treat the existing data on, on your hard drive. On the network adapter page, you, you do need to connect up your network either over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Uh, just simply look at the adapter names if you have a couple of them coming up, uh, and you should be able to very quickly work out which is your Wi-Fi uh, and which is your Ethernet. Now, doing, doing this will help the install software run more smoothly. Um, other than that, then, the, the rest of the installation process should run smoothly and, and just follow the on-screen instructions. Now, at the very end, when it reboots, you may be asked about upgrading your Ubuntu um, or, or Lubuntu. Um, again, Lubuntu is based on Ubuntu. Um, and and that it's, it's really up to you, then, what you want to do there. I, I didn't um, update or, or upgrade and just left it at the installed version from the disk image. Um, but again, if, if you prefer to accept the upgrade, that's fine. Um, but do be aware it will probably take uh, quite some time to run through that process. But either way, uh, at the end of this installation, you should end up then with a fully working Linux PC. So the next step is to get DOSBox up and running. Now, although there are download links for Debian Linux distributions um, on the DOSBox website, um, I find that the easiest way to get DOSBox working is to install it as a package using the Snap Package Manager. So on your Lubuntu PC, uh, you need to open up a terminal window and then work through these um, following steps. So first of all, um, it's a very good idea to update and upgrade your base system. So in, in the terminal window, if you type in sudo apt update, um, it, it will ask you for the password you set up uh, during the installation. And that's just to enable your administrator privileges for that sudo command. Now, once that's run through and updated your um, database of, of packages, we next need to run the upgrade. So do sudo apt upgrade. Uh, and this will start the upgrade process. And, and it is going to take uh, quite some time to run. Now, um, so, so do leave it running, but um, do note that there is a pause after a few minutes where once it's worked out what it needs to upgrade, it will actually ask you if you want to continue or not. So, so do please uh, check the installation progress every now and again until you get to that point. And, and after that, then there won't be any pauses afterwards and it will just run through and, and finish off upgrading your operating system. So once we've finished upgrading, um, we, we then need to install the snap package. So again, in the terminal window, um, sudo apt install snapd. And once that runs through and is installed, we're ready to install DOSBox. So we're going to use the snap package manager. So we need to use the command sudo snap install. And then we're going to use a slight variation on DOSBox, the DOSBox-X package. Uh, and, and that's just one that's really sort of customized out to our Linux distributions. So this is going to ask the Snap Package Manager to get and install all of the bits of software that we need to get DOSBox up and running on our Linux PC. 
Uh, now again, this is going to take a bit of time to process the request. So once you've started it off, just leave it running. Um, now you, uh, if you do watch it, uh, at times you will it will look as if the display is completely frozen and just sitting there doing nothing, um, but it, it actually isn't. Um, ju just, just wait and you'll see it eventually picking back up again. Once that installation is finished, um, you're best off rebooting Linux. Uh, and that then will finish off um, any sort of last little bits to connect it up with your operating system. So after you reboot, you should find a game section in the start menu with DOSBox listed in there. Now on, on my installation I could not get this to work, uh, but please do have a go and see if it does on yours. But, but if it doesn't, um, and, and I found that I had to start DOS, DOSBox through the terminal. So again, if you open up a terminal window and type snap run DOSBox hyphen X. So again, we're asking our snap package manager to run this package for us. Um, that should get DOSBox up and running and it should then show you the emulated DOS PC. Now, of course, it starts up in a window uh, and it's, it's quite nice to have it running full screen so it looks like a proper full DOS laptop. So hold down your F12 key and then press F and that, that will toggle you between the full screen mode and the windowed mode. So that's DOSBox fully installed uh, and all we need to do now is to get hold of some DOS software. Now a, a lot of DOS games are described as abandonware and there are a number of websites that allow you to download uh, the code uh, and in my previous video I used a website abandonwaredos.com now this is a great site that will um, help and advise you on the copyright status of the games. But um, as usual, um, please do assume that any game that you see is under copyright and that you should not be downloading it. Any advice from sites such as Abandonware DOS, um, you should really try and verify that before downloading the code. Now, now having said that, um, this particular site does seem to keep uh, a good track of what's still sold as commercial games uh, and it won't let you download anything under copyright. Now in installing the software is, is really just a matter of downloading the zip file from the, from the website, extracting the contents into a folder for the game and then transferring that onto your Linux PC. Now, now you can of course do this whole process directly on your old laptop, um, but I found that my EPC um, was a bit slow when using the Firefox browser and, and going through and trying to download things directly. So it was actually much faster for me to use my main PC to find and download the game files and then just simply put them onto a USB drive and then copy the files over onto my Linux machine. Now to get the games into DOSBox, um, we do need to organize our files slightly. So we, we need to create a games hard drive um, that we're going to attach to the emulated DOS PC. So um, if you make a folder in your Linux home directory, uh, and I've just called mine DOS games, the best way is to copy your games files into there. And again, I, I like to keep each individual games files um, in their own folder. So I know that all the files for one game are all held in one place. So once we've got that um, DOS games folder with some games in it, we now need to attach this to our DOSBox PC as a hard drive. So start up DOSBox and, get, and that should then take you to the Z colon prompt. So to mount a folder as a disk drive, we have to use a command inside DOSBox. And that is just then simply we mount, we then tell it what drive letter that we want to use for this drive. And then we have to tell it what path on our main computer that that folder lives at. So, so for me, um, I'm using the command mount, and then gonna mount this as drive C and then the path to my DOS games folder is, is, is forward slash home, forward slash Bob, forward slash DOS games. Now, 
Once you have done that, you should now be able to change your drive letter to drive C, so change drive. And you do that in DOS by just typing in the drive letter you want followed by a colon. So if I type in C colon, that should take me on to my drive C. And then I can do a dir command to list out the files. And there you can see there that we have the game folders that we copied across in the previous um, step. So to, to run a game, we, we just simply need to change directory into the game folder. Um, so if I use, um, I'm, if I'm going to run this game Prince of Persia here, I can just do CD Prince. And then if I do the DIR command, that should list out all of the files in that folder. Uh, and really what I'm looking for here is um, an executable file, so a .exe or, or a batch file .bat, or, or maybe sometimes you'll find a command file, a .com file. Uh, and these, these files will pretty much have the name of the game attached to them. Um, you may also find that some games may need to be installed onto your, your PC. So in, instead of the actual game executable file, you might find some sort of install batch file. Uh, but, but if you are in doubt about how to get a game up and running, uh, do a search on the internet for the game manual and, and hopefully you'll find that and that should then give you some hints as to what you need to do. So in this particular game I've got prince.exe uh, and I just simply need to type that the name of that file to get the game to start. So just type in prince and press return. And that should then bring up the game. And, and we now have a fully working DOS game up and running. And as hopefully you can hear, uh, we do have full sound support. So at the moment, um, DOSBox needs to be run from the terminal. Uh, and mounting our games folder needs to be done each time we start it up. So let's try and automate those tasks. So first of all, we'll want to create a desktop shortcut, which will open up the terminal and run our DOSBox command. And that, that will just then just let us just double click this icon and all of that will happen automatically for us. So to do that, you, you need to right click on a, an empty space in your desktop and then select the create new file option. And we're going to name this file dosbox.desktop uh, and, and .desktop is the important bit here. Uh, and then once, once you've done that, you should then see that file appear on your desktop. So if, if you right click on that icon and then open it up with a text editor. And again here, I'm, I'm using LeafPad from the context menu that opens up. I can now enter some code into this file. So the, the code I have up here, um, what it's really doing is it's setting up this, this idea of a desktop entry, which is basically um, making, turning this into a shortcut link. Um, the, the name one is the text that will appear underneath the icon. So just putting that as DOSBox. The exec, that's the actual terminal command that you need to run. So again, that snap run DOSBox hyphen X command, that, that's all we need to do. The next line tells it that this command should be run in the terminal, and then we're telling it that this is an application. Um, now, now this, this bit of code, um, I, I will put that on the main project page that goes with this tutorial on my main Bytes and Bits website. And, and do, do check the description down below for a link to that page. So once you've typed in that code in your text editor, make sure you save the file and you should now have a working shortcut. So if you double click that, that should then automatically start up DOSBox for you. So the next thing we need to do is to auto mount the game folder when we start up DOSBox. And to do that, we're going to need to export a configuration file from the DOSBox system. So, so start up DOSBox again, uh, we, we can use our new shortcut for that. And then once you get to the Z colon prompt, uh, type in the following command. Now, now for this, you will need to make sure you alter the file path to match your particular home directory. So we want config, then minus write conf. And remember, there's no space between the minus and the write conf command there. And then the path that we want to use. So I'm going to 
create a file in my home bob folder and I'm going to call that file dosbox.conf. So once you've done that, that should then create that file for you. And then we simply need to exit out of DOSBox. So just type exit onto the um, command line there. And then we can use um, our file manager to locate that configuration file we've just created. We need to edit it with a text editor. And if you scroll down to the very bottom of the listing, you'll find the auto exec section now this section lets you run um, any commands that you want as DOSBox starts. So we can add our mount command uh, and we can also then get it to actually switch on to that new um, C, C drive. So in the auto exec section, again we're just simply typing in here any commands you would type into DOSBox itself. So we're going to use our mount C and then slash home slash bob slash dos games and again that's the line you need to make sure matches up with your game directory and then taking a new line i'm just going to type in c colon so when dos box starts up we will automatically mount the dos games folder as drive c and then switch drive to that so if, if you save your file after editing it and then restart dos box you should find that it's automatically mounted your game folder and dropped you onto the C drive. Now, now while we're playing with this configuration file, there are a couple of other bits that we can tweak to make life just a little bit easier. So I, I do prefer running DOSBox in full screen mode as it turns my laptop into a full DOS computer or at least looking like a full DOS computer without any of the Linux um, window decorations. So you can set this as the default startup option by changing the full screen value in this config file. And, and you'll find that near the top of the listing. So just scroll down until you find full screen and then change the value to true. Now, my EPC uses a UK keyboard layout. Um, so by default um, in DOSBox, some of my keys don't match up with the symbols um, on the screen. So if, if you search in your text editor um, for the DOS section, so that will be the word DOS with um, the square brackets around it. Um, in, inside there, you'll find a number of settings um, for the way that DOS works. Uh, and one of those is the keyboard layout setting. So for me, I need to set this to UK, um, but there are other values you can use such as US and, and so on. And, and if you need to work out what matches up with your particular um, keyboard language, um, have a look in the DOS box wiki um, pages. Uh, and you need to search for key B, um, so K-E-Y-B as the key for that. And it'll, it'll give you a list of the country codes. So if, if I now save this configuration file and then restart DOSBox again, I, I've pretty good, much got it exactly set up the way I want, starting up in full screen and with my keyboard then working with all of my UK keys. Well, that's really all there is to turning your old laptop into a DOS gaming PC. As for performance, uh, this emulation route works really well. Um, a lot better than I actually thought it would. If you compare it with the pure DOS approach from my last video, you might notice a very slight slowdown, um, only, but only on some of the more processor intensive 3D games. Overall, this little EPC is running all the titles as well as I remember them from the original hardware. So the big difference between this and the pure DOS approach is the addition of sound emulation, which really does bring these classic games fully to life. So overall, if you're going to upcycle your old laptop, I would highly recommend this route. Um, especially since you do get a modern Linux machine in the process, so you can combine your DOS gaming with the coding machine from my first video. So really all that's left for us to do is to actually go out and find some great classic DOS games. And there really are hundreds to choose from. So our, our Doom, our Wolfenstein, Lemmings and so on. They're all out there and they will all work perfectly on this DOS box gaming PC. 
So I, I hope you found this video useful. Um, if so, please do like and subscribe to my channel so you get access to all my upcoming videos on gaming, coding and making as soon as I release them. Have fun playing all of those fantastic DOS games and I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now. For more game programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.